in these situations is blame God for our pain and for our problems. In fact, I believe that the devil is our enemy, and I believe that he works overtime to get us to believe that God is the author of our pain and our problems. But in John 10.10, we find a different story. In John 10.10, Jesus is speaking again. And in this scripture, this is what it says. The thief, talking about Satan, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and they may have it to the full. And so Jesus has come so that we can have life and that more abundant. It's the enemy that has come to rob, kill, and destroy. The enemy is the author of your pain and your suffering. And it's crucial that we realize where these things come from so that we don't attribute them to God. As soon as you believe God is the source of your tribulations, troubles, and tragedies, you will never be able to trust Him. You will be put a distance between you and the only one who is able to to heal you, and to help you. Rather than running away from God, we need to run into His loving arms. If the first verse we read, Jesus said, in this world you will have tribulation, but I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. So how are you going to experience this peace that Jesus is talking about? Listen to what He said there. It says, I have spoken to you so that you can have this peace. Jesus has spoken to us in order for us to experience His peace. God's Word is the basis for our peace. God's Word is the basis for our purpose in life. And God's Word is the basis for us to walk in victory with Him. Even though you may have gone through some really hard things, There is hope for you in Jesus Christ. That's what I said. There's hope for you in Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. This is Jesus speaking once again. And he says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Here's another question for you this morning. Are you weary and burdened down by the things of this life? Jesus says what? He says, come to me if you're in this position. The world will keep piling heavy things on your shoulders. But Jesus says, come to me and I will give you rest. Notice how Jesus says, there's a little phrase in there that says, learn from me in this passage of Scripture. Learn from me. That little phrase is the key to everything else that Jesus says. Listening to His Word and learning from Him is what's going to destroy the difficult yokes and the heavy burdens in our lives. Listening to Him and learning from Him It's what's going to set us free. Remember what Jesus said, I have spoken these things to you so that you may have peace. In order to help you to experience freedom, I need to get you to learn from Him and to learn from His Word. I have seen miracles happen time and time again when people do this. When we learn from Him, amazing things can happen in our lives. There's just a little testimony I'm just reminded of a particular person in the church that comes to mind as I'm thinking about this. And this person that I'm thinking about came into those doors beaten down and defeated. You could see it all over her when she walked in. She was physically defeated. She was mentally and emotionally defeated and spiritually defeated. The people at Transformation Church just started to love on her And give her the word of God. Remember what Jesus said. These things I have spoken to you. That you might have peace. And so they loved on her. These people at Transformation Church loved on her. And they gave her the word of God. 
It was not an easy process, but this woman turned the corner and started grabbing a hold of God's word for herself. Pastor Tim was just saying that this is a season that God is drawing us back to himself. This is a season where God's drawing us back to himself. It's not just about attending a, a building on Sunday and hearing the message of God. It's about, it's about acquiring a quiet time with God throughout the entire week. It's about spending time in his presence. It's about humbling yourself before God. It's about running after him every single day of your life. And this is what God wants to establish in your life during this time when all of these things are shut down. He wants you to get on your knees in the quiet place. He wants you to seek his face in the quiet place. He wants you to study his word in the quiet place. Why? Because the quiet place is where we get the words from God, the words from heaven. And in the quiet place, when we get those words, those words bring us peace. Remember what Jesus said. That my words, I speak these words to you so that you might have peace. And so when you spend time with Jesus, when you spend time in his word, that's when you receive peace in your life. So this person came in beaten down. But she's turned the corner but she, because she's grabbed a hold of God's word. She went from broken down and defeated to standing upright on her feet with a smile on her face. Right now, she's starting to experience some victory in her life. But that wasn't true when she walked in those doors. And that might not be true of you right now. Maybe you're beaten down by life. Maybe you're struggling. Maybe you're experiencing the same things that she was experiencing when she came through those doors. But I'm telling you that the same thing is true of you as is true of her. That if you will hear his voice, if you will allow yourself to receive what Jesus has for you, God will turn you around. He'll put you back on your feet. He'll give you hope and fill you with all the joy and peace that comes with knowing him I've said these things to you so that you might have peace this woman isn't finished yet she's God's still working on her just like God's still working on all of us but the key is staying in the program the key is allowing that process to work itself out in your life She's not finished yet, but she's on her way. Why? Because of the words that Jesus is speaking to her. Because she is learning from him. It's time to lay down the heavy burdens that you're carrying around from this life. And it's time to start learning from him. Find some place that's going to help you walk this process out in your life. If you're in this area, the Gross City, Mercer County area, the people at Transformation Church would love to be a part of your victory story. You can call or text us and, and we'll start, get you started on that path of victory in Christ. I guarantee you that you won't regret it when you take that step. So all of us have gone through difficult times in our lives. But a key point that we need to keep in focus is the first thing we need to do is understand that God is on our side. And we need to listen and learn from him. God is on our side and we need to listen and learn from him. Be careful what you're listening to. Come on. You hearing me? Be careful what you're listening to. Many people during the crazy times are living and are saturating themselves with bad news instead of focusing their eyes on the good news. Did you hear what I'm saying? People are getting locked into what the news is saying. They're tuning into the news and they're, they're obsessed with what's going on in the world around us. They're obsessed with the bad news that's coming through the airways. But God is calling us to the good news. Amen? During this time period, God is calling us to get away with Him and to take in the good news. Did you know that the word gospel actually means good news? And God wants you to get the good news in you because it's the good news that gets in you that sets you free. So are you listening to bad news or are you focusing on good news? In Romans 12, 2, which is one of the scripture that this church, the name of this church has come from, Romans 12, 2 says this, do not conform to the pattern of this world. 
Come on now. Where do you get the pattern of this world? Through Hollywood, through the news, through listening to everything that this world has to give you, you get conformed into the pattern of this world. But the Bible says in Romans 12, 2, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. How do you get transformed? By the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. And so if you lock in to the things that this world is spewing out, then you will be conformed to this world. But if you lock in to what Jesus is saying, oh dear Lord, if you lock in to what Jesus is saying, transformation will begin to happen in your life. And that's what we're after, and that's what God wants to happen in our lives. God wants us to be transformed. What are we going to be transformed by? By the renewing of our minds. And how are our minds renewed? By locking in to what Jesus has said. And then it says, it goes on to say, that when we do that, we'll come to a place in our lives when we are being transformed and when we are transformed, that we'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. And as a Christian, all of us, should be proving God's will and God's word in our lives and in the lives of the people around us. We should be a reflection of what God's will is in the world around us. And this is the process that causes that to be possible. We are transformed through the renewing of our minds. Our minds are renewed when we read and listen to God's word. When our minds are renewed, we are transformed and we are empowered to prove God's will in the world we live in. It is crucial for us to renew our minds through reading and feeding on God's word. And we have a wonderful opportunity to do this right now in the time that we're living in. Another key point is when we focus on the good news, a transformation takes place in our lives. So if you want a transformation to take place in your life. Focus on the good news. If you want the same old life that you've always had, keep doing the same things that you've always done. But if you want to experience a transformation in your life, lock in to the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and you will be transformed. Romans 8, 6 says this, For the mind set on the flesh is death, but the mind set on the spirit is life and peace. So you can either set your mind on the things of the flesh, on this carnal world, and you can reap a harvest of death in your life. Or you can set your mind on things above. You can set your mind on the things of the Spirit, and you can experience life and peace. It's your choice. Bad news produces fear and dread and ultimately destruction in your life. Good news produces faith and peace and leads you into eternity. Stop listening to all of the bad news on your television, on your computer, on your phone, the people around you, the conversations that they're having. Stop listening to all of the bad news and interject the good news right in the middle of all of that. Get your eyes and your mind on the good news of Jesus Christ. Spend more time reading your Bible than you are listening to the endless doom and gloom on the news and around you. Get locked in to the good news. Another key point is listening to God's Word fills you with hope even when you face hopeless situations. Listening to God's Word fills you with hope even when you face hopeless situations. There may be people listening to my voice right now who you've been struggling and and you don't have any hope. God's Word produces hope. And right in the middle of those hopeless situations, you can have hope. In fact, there was a man in the Bible, Habakkuk, that was in a hopeless situation. And I want to turn there and I want to read a little bit about what he says. Because his example is one that we should all follow when we're going through hard times. We're talking this morning about what you do when you experience hard times, trials, and tribulations in this life. What did Jesus tell us to do? And so we're going to take a look at Habakkuk and see how he faced difficult times in his life. In Habakkuk chapter 3, we're going to look at verses 17 to 19. 
This is what the Scripture says. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stalls, are you hearing this guy's situation? Everything is failing. There is nothing good going on in this guy's life. And he goes down and he lists every single problem that he's facing. So he says there's no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls. Verse 18 says, yet, yet, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread upon the heights. So right in the middle of this trying time for this man, rather than get down, rather than grumble and complain, rather than kick stones around, he lifts up his eyes to the hills from where his help comes from. And he cries out to God. And he said, I will rejoice in the Lord. And that is the model of what you and I need to do in troubled times. Rather than grumbling and complaining, rather than entering into a place of fear and destruction, we need to rejoice in our God. We're not rejoicing because of the situation. We're rejoicing in spite of the situation. And when we rejoice, man, God comes into that scene. God comes into the scene. And that's what we want. We want God. In our lives, because He rescues, He saves, He sets us apart on high, and He causes us to walk in victory. Again, this man lists everything that's going wrong in his life. After listing everything that is going wrong in his life, he declares his decision. Did you hear that? A decision. It's a decision. He declares his decision to rejoice in the Lord. Are you deciding, in spite of straightened circumstances, are you deciding to rejoice in the Lord. After he does this, he quotes some scripture. Focusing on God's word is what gave this man the victory. I spoken these words to you that you might have peace. God's word brings peace and brings victory into our lives. Here's a key point. We need to declare our decision to rejoice in the Lord out loud when bad times come. Go to James chapter 1. We're going to look at verses 2 through 4 in James chapter 1. Verses 2 through 4. It tells us exactly what we just saw in Habakkuk's life. James chapter 1 verses 2 through 4 say this. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete not lacking anything so this says consider it pure joy it, other translations say rejoice during trials why does the bible say rejoice during trials just what we said with habakkuk there's a scripture in the word that says that the joy of the lord is our strength and how many of you know that when there's a battle coming against you, you need strength. You need strength to win the battle. And so God says, consider it pure joy. Rejoice, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds. Rejoice. Why? Because when you rejoice, you have the joy of the Lord. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. And when you have strength, you can resist the devil. And the Bible tells us in another place that when you resist the devil, he must flee. When you resist the devil, he must. When you assist the devil, he stays. When you resist the devil, he must flee. And you can't resist the devil unless you have strength. And you can't have strength if you don't have strength joy so if when the bad times come you begin to grumble and complain and get your head down you're not going to have the strength that it takes to fight the battle that's before you do you understand what god's trying to tell us here the joy of the lord is our strength rejoice when hard times come not in the hard times but in the faithfulness of your god in the promises that he's given us in his word rejoice 
Because it's that joy that comes as you rejoice that's going to produce strength, that's going to empower you to resist the devil, and that's going to cause him to have to flee. And you're going to walk in victory because you've learned to rejoice in the middle of the battle. Rejoice in His promises for your life. Let His joy produce strength in you. Use this strength to resist the enemy and walk in victory through every battle that the enemy brings your way. We're called to be victorious Christians. Not defeated, beaten down Christians, but victorious Christians. And this is how we do it. This is how we fight our battles. Get your eyes on Jesus. Rejoice in the battle, knowing that Jesus is fighting for you and bringing you into the victory. Here's a key point. When God's joy fills us with strength, we must use this strength to resist the devil. And that's when we walk in victory. I'm going to close this morning with 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 12. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 12. And there's a whole backstory to this. And what's going on basically is that there are three different armies that are coming against the people of God. And they are bearing down on God's people. And the king cries out to God. And I just want to look at a very small part of this, but I encourage you to read the whole account. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 12, the king opens his mouth and says this, Our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Ha! Woo! We don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Have you ever been in that place where things were happening so fast and things were going so quickly and they were just pressing down on you that you did not know what to do? I've been there. And I love what King Jehoshaphat said. I love that he opens his mouth and he says, God, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And my question for you this morning is, where are your eyes today? Where are your eyes today? Are they on the coronavirus or are they on Jesus? Where are your eyes today? Are they on your own pain or are they on Jesus? Where are your eyes today? God is calling us to trust and obey Him today and to place our eyes upon Him because He wants us to walk in victory. Where are your eyes today, church? Because God is leading us to fix our eyes upon Him and to enter into the victory that He has for our lives. Maybe you feel completely overwhelmed today by what's coming against you and what's attacking you. In this situation, they called upon the Lord. Notice what the king says. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. So a key point to finish up is very simple. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus Christ. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, no matter what comes your way. And he will lead you in the victory. Again, where are your eyes today? Where are your eyes today? We need to trust God completely with every aspect of our lives. The very first step in trusting Jesus is inviting Him into your life to be your Lord and Savior. If you've never taken this step, today is the day for you to take this step. I want you to repeat this prayer after me right now if you want to become a child of God. If you want to come into this life that I've talked about today, you need to take this first step and you need to surrender your life to Jesus and you need to offer it to Him and ask Him to come into your life and be your Lord and Savior. If this is something that you want to do this morning, right now, where you're at, it doesn't matter where you're at, right now, wherever you're at, let's pray this prayer together. Just repeat after me. Say this. Say, Lord Jesus, I give you my life and I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins and come into my life and be my Lord and my Savior. God, I ask you to help me to live for you each and every day of the rest of my life. 
In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, God did exactly what you asked him to do. And right now, I just want to make an offer to you. If you've prayed that prayer, I want, to, I want to get this book into your hands. It's just a little booklet called Now What? And what it's talking about is now that you've prayed this prayer, now that you've taken this step, what do I do now? And so this book will be very helpful to you. If you prayed this prayer and you're interested in me sending you a free copy of this book, all I want you to do down in the comments section, just type in free booklet or free book. And I will private message you, get your address, and I'll send this book out to you to help you out in the days and weeks to come in your new life with Jesus Christ. Maybe there are some people listening to my voice right now who I've said before have been overwhelmed by life. I want you to know that there is hope for you today. If you have a prayer request, please put it in the comments below on the live stream because we want to pray for you today. And uh, Pastor Tim, do we have any prayer requests at this point? Okay, I'm just going to pray a general prayer over everybody listening to my voice right now. And if you have any specific prayer requests, please just type them in the comment section below. And we're going to check that out again after I pray a general prayer over you. And if there are any prayer requests, I just want to call Pastor Tim up to help us to pray for those. Father, I thank you for your people. God, I thank you for your wisdom. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your love for us. And I thank you that you have not left us. You have not abandoned us. But you're right here with us in the middle of all that's going on. You're right here with us. And you're just asking us to take your hand and to walk with you because you want to lead us in victory in this life. So, Father, I pray for each person listening to my voice right now. God, I bind every fear that's coming against the people that are listening right now. Every fear that would try to come against them whether it has to do with life in general or whether it has to do with this specific attack upon the earth right now. God, right now, I take every thought captive. I take every fear captive coming against your people, coming against those who are listening to my voice right now. I take them captive, that fear right now in Jesus' name, and I cast it down in the name of Jesus. And I receive you, Father God, totally flushing us of all fear and filling us with your faith, faith in you, Lord God, that we might trust you, that we might look to your promises, and that we might experience the peace and the blessing that comes with trusting you and running after you and grabbing a hold of the promises that you've given us in your word. So right now, Father God, I pray for every single person. Lord, I pray for every single financial need that people have right now. Lord, many people have lost their jobs. Many people's places of work have shut down. Lord God, many people's source of finances has dried up. Right now, Father God, I say that you are able to provide for them right in the middle of this. And so, Father God, I receive all fear regarding finances. Lord God, I receive it. Fall into the ground, fruitless against your people. And I receive, Lord God, a faith in your promises. Lord, you said if, if you didn't spare your only son, how much more will you give us all things? God, you would give us all things. Lord, you provide for us. And so, Father, I pray for a revelation to be poured out to your people that you are the provider, Jehovah Jireh, our provider. I pray, Lord God, that people would see and understand that, Lord God, even though their natural source of finances may have dried up or gone away, that you are still their provider and that you will provide for them in every way. God, bless them. Bless them and pour out your blessing upon them in Jesus' name. God, every other, Lord God, fear, every other request, Father God, Lord, I lift up to you. And I pray, Lord God, that you would minister life to those that are listening and that you would teach them to walk in victory according to your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There's a couple prayer requests, so I'm just going to have Pastor Tim come up and share those and then pray for that. So we want to pray this morning for the, uh, I think it's pronounced Geiger family or Giger family. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, Geiger. Um, they had a family member pass away and Rhonda asked that, Rhonda Osborne asked if we would pray for them. And so, Lord, we lift up the Geiger family to you right now and ask that 
that you would comfort them in this time, that you would be so close to them, Lord, that you would um, just continue to uh, just let, them, let this be a time of celebration uh, as well as a time, a time of mourning to just celebrate the life that was lived. Lord, and I just pray that, that you would just, um, just ease the pain, Lord, that's going on, that you would comfort uh, the broken right now. And, and I pray uh, just a special grace and touch over the Geiger family right now in Jesus' name. I ask, Lord, that you would um, lift up Rhonda as well as uh, this was a close friend of hers. And Lord, I ask that you would just continue to, to just uh, help her as well. Lord, let her be a voice that would continue to comfort uh, the family, but also to lift them up as well um, in prayer and in support. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for uh, Denise Orr, who has a, a severe broken leg and surgery is scheduled for the morning. Lord, I pray for Denise, God, Lord, that you would give her uh, peace, protection. Lord, I ask that you would just uh, watch over her tonight. Lord, give her um, a pain-free night, Lord, as she is just um, waiting to have surgery and have everything repaired. Lord, we pray for healing over her leg. Lord, I would love to hear about uh, complete heal healing and restoration in Denise's life right now. Lord, I pray that you would just fuse bones together, that you would allow there to be change. Lord, we call forth your healing power over Denise right now in Jesus' name. And we're believing for an awesome report. And so, Lord, I pray that you would just move on her life and that you would watch over her. And we thank you for your healing power and your virtue and everything to go forth in Denise right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Uh, Lord, we, we pray for um, Greg Mundo, Mundus, Mundos, the uh, AG mission director. He has uh, the coronavirus and right now he is um, fighting for his life. And so right now we pray, we pray for Greg. Lord, we lift up Greg. I know a lot of people are praying for Greg right now. And we're believing, God, that no weapon formed against this man will prosper. And we're believing for complete restoration over his life right now. Let his lungs come back to normal. Let his body come back to normal. Let his kidneys work as they're supposed to. Let everything, Lord, come to pass right now over this man of God. Lord, we pray that nothing would come against him right now. And Lord, I pray right now, complete restoration. And he will walk up out of that hospital bed and be completely restored. Lord, we believe, we believe, we believe that by by your stripes we are healed and so right now we call upon your strength and your healing power over Greg right now to bring complete restoration over his life and we thank you for it in Jesus name in Jesus name amen, amen. amen. Lord we pray for the Troyer family that was in an accident God we pray Lord your complete hand of healing upon their life Lord, I pray your blessing upon them. Lord, we pray that they would know that Jesus heals. We pray that they would know that in this time, Jesus heals. Jesus still heals. He heals right now. And so I pray right now for the Troyer family that you would bring a revelation of this healing into their life. Lord, and that that whole family would be restored completely and fully to you. And that salvation would find their house today in Jesus' name. Lord, so we pray for them and that you would bring healing into their life right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, Hallelujah. we just come together in agreement right now. And Lord God, as we've prayed for some, Lord God, we now lift up every single person around the world that's been impacted by this virus. And right now, Father God, we pray for your grace and your mercy to be poured out, Father God. We pray, Lord God, that you would rescue every single person, Lord God, that's experiencing the symptoms and the effects of this coronavirus. Right now, Lord God, we receive, Lord God, that, there, that, that a spear would be put through this virus in Jesus' name. That just as in days of old, Lord God, when Phineas rose up and, and, and put a spear through that, that, that plague that was spreading, right now, Father God, we 
take a stand. We step into the gap and we pray for the people of the world, Father God. And we, Lord God, say that this virus is not greater than you. And we command it to bow its knee and to be gone from this earth in the name of Jesus. We receive, Lord God, victory to be released throughout the entire earth right now. And we receive you stopping this thing with your great power. And in Jesus' name, amen, amen. So, Father, right now, we ask that you would bless your people. Lord, I ask that, that this week would be an awesome week. Lord, and that we would see your hand move in so many ways. Lord, there's been a lot of people praying that this virus would end. And, Lord, I, I'm looking to see how it's going to end. Lord, I'm looking to the end. I'm looking to see how this thing is crushed in Jesus' name. Lord, no more, no more, that, that everything is going to be lifted and life is going to go back as normal quicker and quicker. Lord, I'm not believing for this to be long and drawn out. I'm believing that your hand is going to put an end to it in Jesus' name because the saints are praying. Because the saints are praying, this will end sooner than later. And Lord, we're believing for it. So right now, I pray a blessing over your people. I pray a blessing over them. I ask God that you would watch over them. I pray that you would keep them safe. I thank you that no weapon formed against them will prosper in Jesus' name. And they are blessed. They are blessed in every area of their life. They are blessed. And so right now I pray over everyone watching and everyone listening that you, they would receive a blessing from the Lord today and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And so Lord, be with your people this week. We thank you, Lord, that as they go that you're giving them ideas to prosper. As they go, you're giving them uh, hope and a future and a promise of good things to come. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed, Transformation Church. You are loved in this place. We love you, and we're believing for great things and for prosperity and blessing to come upon your life.